Welcome to Mount Fitchett Castle and Norman Village of 1066. You are now about to travel back in time over 900 years and experience medieval life within the castle walls. We tend to think of castles being made of stone, but for several hundred years in England's history, from the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066 to the reign of Edward II in the 1300s, castles made of timber were found everywhere. Military necessity dictated their creation and social standing dominated their architecture. Some were modest fortresses or frontier outposts. Others were of a grand design and many were disguised to look like stone. Their first purpose was to protect knights and their horses, but soon they housed entire communities, some of which became the villages, towns and cities of modern England. Though they were not temporary structures, little evidence remains to chronicle the existence of these majestic timber castles, nothing but mounds and ditches in the countryside. Nothing, that is, until Mount Fitchett Castle was reconstructed on its original site. It is completely unique as the only reconstructed wooden Motton Bailey Castle to exist in the world. Mount Fitchett Castle is believed to have been an early Iron Age fort and Roman, Saxon and Viking settlements before being overpowered by William the Conqueror in 1066. Artifacts from these periods found on the site support this belief. The castle was invaded by the Normans who defeated Harold's army at Hastings. But this was only the start of the Norman conquest of England. It took a further two years to bring the population of England to heel. As the invading army made its way across the country, fighting and crushing any resistance in its path, the Normans would establish castles on occupied strategic locations and build what were already fortified positions into Mott and Bailey castles. The principle of the Mott and Bailey castle is that within the castle walls lay an inner and outer bailey, defended by a steep slope and surrounding ring moat. Mott is French and means earth mound and bailey is a courtyard. The slopes would have been covered in animal fat and have wooden spikes sticking out at an angle to make any attacks on the castle by invading armies nearly impossible. Originally, it was necessary to build castles very quickly. By using hundreds of slaves, local peasants and Norman craftsmen, it would have taken only a few weeks to construct. All Norman castles at the time of the conquest were constructed of timber. The Normans even brought two timber sectioned castles from Normandy to construct when they landed in England. England in 1066 was vastly wooded and therefore timber was a quick, strong and very accessible material to use. They would clear the woodland surrounding the castle to an area in the region of half a mile to enable them to see oncoming enemies. Teams of Norman carpenters and craftsmen would scour the surrounding woodland and forest for suitable trees, and timber poles would have been hand-picked and sharpened and then used to erect the palisade. These would have been dragged from the wood by oxen and horses, or carried by teams of peasants forcibly made to work by Norman soldiers. The wooden castles only lasted for approximately 80 years, and in 1125, the castle was slowly rebuilt in Flint. After the attack on the castle by King John around 1215, the castle lay in ruins for many years, and over time, the stones were stolen by the villagers to build their houses. As you travel around the village of Stansted today, you can still see flint walls and houses made from the castle stones. The Mott and Bailey castle site was taken over by nature and was soon covered in dense shrub, trees, brambles and bushes and was totally forgotten until 1975 when the owner, Alan Goldsmith, had the vision to rebuild and restore the castle to its former glory. 
the grounds were cleared to reveal the original earthworks and mounds. And after years of battling with planners, in 1980 the work began to reconstruct Mount Fitchett Castle. Leading historians, archaeologists and craftsmen were drafted in from all over the country to make the castle as accurate and authentic as possible. The English oak for the palisade and village buildings was sourced from Suffolk and the reed for the roof makers came from Norfolk. The roofs were reconstructed of wood, turf and wheat straw, all of which were used by the Normans. A geophysics survey placed where high nitrogen deposits were found indicated where a dwelling had been or an activity had taken place over many years. The houses were positioned carefully upon the ground so as not to disturb the archaeology. After many years of work, the restoration of Mount Fitchett Castle was complete and it was open to the public in 1985. It is unique as being the only wooden Motton Bailey reconstruction on its original site anywhere in the world. During the Norman period, the outer bailey was occupied by craftsmen and tradesmen who had a use and purpose to the resident baron. A potter producing pots for the castle and kitchen. A brew house producing beer, wine and mead for the baron and paying inhabitants. A carpenter, an intricate craftsman making timber structures and arrow shafts as well as constructing buildings and repairing the palisade. A blacksmith, who was a very important craftsman. He would shoe the baron's horse, make armory, arrowheads, chain mail, and all the ironwork within the castle walls that was necessary. A weaving house, with wool sourced from the resident sheep, and prepared and put onto the loom and then furnished into textiles and cloth, and later dyed using herbs and plants from the herb garden, also located within the castle walls. The inner bailey was solely for the baron's use, with his residence and grand banqueting hall, stable for his stallion, and a falconry for his hunting hawks. The Motton Bailey Castle was in a very strategic and defensive position, when under attack, the defenders could rally within the smaller inner bailey. The drawbridge into the inner bailey would have been made from wood, and once under attack, it could have been raised up. Originally, the wooden bridge leading to the inner bailey would have been burnt to hinder the attacking forces. The castle is located along the Stort Valley, and in Norman times, the lower street of the village was a fast-flowing river, which is still under the road today. In medieval times, the current car park was a large boggy marsh and river. It was only drained during World War II by American forces and concreted over up to a depth of two feet for storing their tanks and fuel for bombers in preparation for the D-Day invasion. They were kept there before being loaded onto the trains and taken to the docks to be shipped to Normandy. In Norman times, the castle was therefore defended on two sides by rivers and a large boggy marsh, making it virtually impossible to reach by attacking armies. The river was a vital link for transportation to the castle, and also a source of fresh fish for the villagers, as well as providing clay for the potter and reed for thatching. We think the original village was situated on the fields opposite the castle, and the river would have been made passable by a ford or a small wooden bridge now long since gone. Since opening in 1985, the castle has had over two million visitors, hundreds of thousands of schoolchildren, and has won many national awards. It is a unique historical time capsule and prides itself on its vast amount of hands-on and interactive exhibits. Mount Fitchett Castle is very proud about the freedom and happiness of all its animals, many of which have